Hey, this is Paul. Welcome to Orlando Airport. We are about to board a flight to Cleveland. I'm off to see the one and only Dan Kennedy um, to talk about our Zero to Million event. Uh, we're going to have hundreds of private practice owners there. And what I thought would be really cool is on the way, uh, the flight has been delayed. There's a huge storm about to kick off in Orlando. Would we'll just be to share with you some fantastic principles Dan has taught me uh, that have helped me get to where I am uh, in my life right now, to the point where I'm talking to you uh, from Orlando. I've moved from England to Orlando. Uh, my entire life got turned upside down, my business, everything uh, about my life turned upside down when I met Dan Kennedy. Uh, and I'm going to share with you some fantastic principles that have really helped me in the hope that they can help you too. So we're going to go and see Dan. Um, the flight behind us is definitely going to be delayed. There's a huge storm in Florida. Uh, but look, this is the question I get asked all the time. How did I meet Dan? Um, how did I meet Dan Kennedy? And this is the story about 10 years ago now. Um, it was four weeks after my first uh, child. I've got four now. My first child, uh, Harry, was born. I got wind of a marketing conference that was happening in London. So I went to London and I went to a marketing conference. I lived in England at the time. And when I was there, Somebody told me about this guy called Dan Kennedy and uh, every person I spoke to, even the people on the stage kept mentioning this guy in America called Dan Kennedy. So I thought, right, I'm gonna have to find out who this guy is. I went to my room that night, um, did a quick Google search on my phone for this guy called Dan. Uh, found all his books, found all of his conferences, found lots of YouTube videos and just devoured it. Literally, I was probably up for like two nights looking at Dan and looking at all of his videos and realized um, that I needed to go and see him. Then I got told that there was actually a big conference taking place. Dan had this thing called an Info Summit that was happening in Chicago on the Thursday, the Friday, the Saturday and the Sunday, which was fine because I was in London, it was Monday, Tuesday. Um, and I thought, you know what, that would be really cool to go. Um, the dilemma was I had a four week old and the dilemma was I had to speak to my wife, Natalie, um, potentially about not coming home. I was supposed to be home on the Tuesday night um, after the conference in London and had this crazy, wacky, bonkers idea that going to Chicago might be really, really good for us because this guy, you know, he, he looked fantastic. He looked like he knew everything I needed to know about marketing and business success. So I rang Natalie, um, told her that I wouldn't be home, booked a flight to Chicago, flew on the Wednesday, uh, landed in Chicago on the Wednesday night, did the conference Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, flew home from Chicago on the Sunday, got back into London on the Monday, um, and my life completely changed. That is no exaggeration, it's not hyperbole. Um, I knew from what I'd seen from Dan um, and the conference that I'd been to in Chicago, uh, which was nearly three and a half to 4,000 miles away from my family, um, I lost three and a half days, but I gained a completely new opportunity in my life. I met Dan uh, at that event and all of the principles and everything that he's taught me ever since have served me well. Um, it was just, like it was the moment in my life that defined pretty much everything that I've done ever since. I wouldn't be talking to you now from this airport had I not have made that decision to go from London to Chicago that day. Obviously it didn't go down uh, amazingly well uh, back home. It was a tough call. I was just getting started on the journey. It cost me thousands of dollars, um, not only for the ticket, but also for the hotel, the travel, the flight, the jet lag, not being in my physio business at the time. Uh, I had to cancel lots of patients to get there, but it was the best decision I've ever made. Since then, I've been part of Dan's Masterminds. I've been at conferences. I've done coaching with him. I've done one-on-one -on -one days with him. Uh, it's just been the most incredible journey, uh, quite simply because of the, the thinking, the teaching, the principles that Dan has taught me that I've applied to my life. Um, and across the course of the next few minutes in this video, I'm going to share with you uh, some of the best things that I've ever learned from Dan as we head to see him in Cleveland, hopefully, um, when this flight takes off. Uh, but even if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. There is a bar literally 10 yards away uh, from where we're recording this video now. So it's going to be a nice night, whatever happens to the weather here in Florida. So let me tell you the best thing I've ever learned from Dan. One of them, there's, there's so many, but this is one of the best. Uh, it's actually on my t-shirt right now, if you can see it. Um, it's called Approval Not Needed. And it's a principle, it's a way of living, it's a type of life, it's a quality of life. Um, it's just a, a, a beautiful way to live where you just really have nothing to, to tell anybody, you have nothing to show anybody, you have like, no care about what anybody thinks about what you do. And the thing that Dan taught me very, very early um, is that approval really isn't needed. And it's a wonderful statement and it's a great phrase that people um, love when I tell them, approval is not needed. But the key bit is, how do you get to the point where approval isn't needed? Well, you get to the point where you educate yourself so well 
on the principles of life and the principles of business and success and you just know exactly what you need to do to get to the point where you want to be, whether it's in life, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in business, whether it's finance, whether it's just whatever it is, when you get to the point in your life where you're just sure, you just know what works, the principles of life, the principles of business, the principles of making money, you get to the point where you just you just know approval isn't needed. You don't need anybody, your parents, you don't need your friends, your family, just nobody to approve of what you're doing. And I believe personally, um, that's the thing that everybody wants. Everybody, there's, there's hundreds of people in this airport right now, and most people's problem is they think they need approval. Everything that they do, whether it's relationships, their job, going to college, getting married, like whatever it is, whatever it is, people are, they're just living with the, the belief that they need to be approved of by somebody. And I think they do that often because it's a, um, it's a, a substitute, if you like, for really living the life that they want to live. And you can only ever get to the point of living your life when you know exactly how to live it, how to be successful, how to enjoy life, how to make money, how to do all of the things that you secretly crave, which is significantly more important than approval. Hence, I get to walk around an airport with a t-shirt on it, with my signature on it these days that says, um, approval isn't needed, because it really isn't. Um, I don't want it, I don't need it, and that's come from the belief, the confidence that I get from uh, living the life that I am today, which is underpinned by the principles of success in business, in life, in happiness, and understanding that, and that's one of the things that I've got from Dan. Uh, lots of autonomy to live life, how I want to live life, uh, with who I want to live life, where I want to live it, when I want to live it, uh, not having to be in any town or any city, any country on any given day to make the money I want, uh, which just kind of flies in the face of how most people kind of live life so I think the best thing that I've ever learned from Dan is the idea that approval isn't needed it's not a phrase that he used uh, it's a phrase that I come up with myself but it was as a result of everything that I got to learn from Dan it allowed me to live a life uh, where I don't need approval from anybody I got to cut the cord and all of the negativity all of the worries about what people thought about me what I was doing how I was living my life and I believe that's how every entrepreneur these days uh, really secretly uh, is doing what they're doing so that they get to live their own life on their terms uh, independent of worrying about what anybody else thinks approval absolutely is not needed So here we are, we are in Cleveland, the home of the Cleveland Browns, the home of Superman, the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and the home of the one and only Dan Kennedy. We've got 24 hours in this uh, amazing city, Cleveland. Uh, we're gonna work with Dan on the zero to million event. Um, I'm gonna have some fun across the course of the next uh, few hours. Um, stay tuned, watch the rest of the show. best things Dan ever taught me was um, it was quite interesting because I spent my whole physio career wanting to be the best physio I spent my entire life thinking that if I was the best physical therapist if I had the best skills if I was the best clinician then I would be the most successful and I came to see this guy called Dan uh, here in Cleveland who I hoped would teach me how to be more successful and better and that would include promoting my clinical skills and um, you know, showcasing to the world how good I was at my um, my hands-on skills or my exercises or whatever. And uh, the first thing Dan said to me was, um, the people who make the money in business are the marketers of the business. And you have to start thinking of yourself as a marketer of a business, not the doer of the business, if you like. And it was a big mental shift for me, but it was the first day that really my life started to change. I moved from somebody that spent 10, 12 hours a day in a treatment room treating patients uh, to somebody that spent 10 or 12 hours a day uh, marketing a business, trying to find patients for other people that would do the work for me. And I went from probably, let's say, 80 visits a week to 500 visits a week uh, at one point in my clinic. Um, and that was all because I shifted my mind from being a, a physio, a good clinician, a good practitioner, 
to somebody that was uh, a really good marketer of that same profession and um, that was one of the best most profound lessons that Dan taught me alongside uh, the idea that experts are not people that uh, do what they do experts are people that educate and um, that was one of the principles that I took with me from my first meeting with Dan that I had to move from being a doer of the thing to uh, a marketer of the thing and secondly that if I really wanted to be an expert um, you know, which a lot of people do in the, you know, in the, the medical healthcare professional field, I had to move to be an expert um, who educated and I had to teach people, I had to help people, I had to teach them about what I did, why they were suffering with pain, why they still had back pain, why after 10 years of seeing a doctor, taking pills, surgery, all of these things, why did they still have back pain, why did they still have knee pain? And I uh, realized that if I became an expert in helping people at that level, um, that that would bring people to my clinic in droves. And then it just became a matter of how good I got at recruitment, how courageous I was at hiring people and building a business. Um, stepping back, if you like, from the patient care, not relying upon me. Um, and it was, a, it was a profound day. And it, um, it happened here in Cleveland, of all places, that uh, I don't think I'd ever heard of Cleveland. I'd certainly never had any desire to be here. Um, but it's a really cool city, um, and God bless Dan, uh, taught me that really marketers, you know, the marketers of the business make the most money, and ultimately experts educate. So another thing that Dan taught me was the idea that 80% of people have the habits of the 80% and that's what keeps them stuck at 80%. So I'll say that again. 80% um, of the people uh, in the world uh, have the habits of 80% of the people and that's what keeps them stuck at 80% of the people. Um, and really what it is is that the um, majority of people, the masses if you like, uh, have an average life. They have an average life because they do what the rest of the world does. It, makes sense that if you follow the crowd, you do the thing that everybody else does, uh, you have the habits of 80%, you'll have the, the life of 80%. And really what we've got to do is break away from the idea that you have a force of habit controlling your life, and really what you've got uh, instead or should aim for is a force of habit, and the two things are very different. Um, one is, um, for example, I've got my phone, and many people would say it's a force of habit that they go on Facebook, um, and it's a habit force not to go on Facebook. It's a, a force of habit to lie in on the morning. It's a habit force to go to the gym. Um, and the most important thing is the habit force, where you actually actively, uh, uh, almost aggressively force this uh, standard, this way of living in your life, whether it's to read, whether it's to learn, whether it's to uh, invest in yourself, whatever it is, it's a um, force of habit rather than a habit force. A habit force is what controls most people's lives and they think that they have no control over it. Um, and that's why most people really feel as though they're not in control of their life because they succumb to a force of habit and they think that there is no other way. One of the things that I learned very early was that you have a habit force and you have to force that habit, whether it's fitness, uh, whether it's education, whether it's investment, whether it's to travel, whether it's to spend time with your kids, whether it's to go on holiday, whether it's to just do the right thing, whether it's whatever it is. If you force that and make it a habit, then ultimately your life becomes very, very different in the end and you become one of the 20% rather than one of the 80% whose habits are of the 80% that keeps them stuck in the 80%. So there you go, um, habit force versus force of habit. So we found the nightlife in Cleveland. 
we've got Budweiser, we've got IPA, we've got the Lakers on the telly over there somewhere. Hey, this is Paul, welcome to Cleveland. We are here in Ohio. Uh, this behind me is the location for the biggest event of the physical therapy private practice owner calendar of 2023. We're gonna work with the incredible Dan Kennedy. Um, Cleveland is famous for being the home of the Cleveland Browns, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Superman, and it is Dan Kennedy, uh, and that's why we're here. This quite literally is the event hotel, July the 8th and 9th. Uh, we're gonna be in this hotel, the West in downtown. So uh, wherever you are in the world, um, you are invited. You can come and work with us for two days, July 8th and 9th. Uh, the event is called Zero to Million, and we're gonna share with you the principles, the success principles of multi, multi-millionaire business owners. Uh, if you have aspirations to be one, uh, to get past seven figures in your business and take home lots and lots of profit, um, it's gonna take place. This uh, event is going to happen in this hotel July 7th. Uh, it's on the Friday night. We're going to have some beers in this hotel. The event will take place 8th and 9th. We would absolutely love you to be there. Uh, it's going to be the most amazing two days. Uh, Saturday and Sunday we're going to get together and we're going to share success principles of the most successful business owners, entrepreneurs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we're going to be here together for two full days. Saturday and Sunday, uh, we hope you'll join us 8th and 9th and we're going to have the most important conversation of all if you are a private practice owner. Uh, what do you need to do with your marketing to get from an insurance-based business, traditional insurance, all the way to cash? Um, maybe it's not drop every insurance you've got, but maybe it's just start to get rid of some insurance uh, and put more cash pay into your business as well as if you're a cash pay business owner, uh, how do you scale that business? We're gonna talk all about that when we get here on the Saturday, the 8th of uh, July, and the Sunday, the 9th of July as well. Come and see us, you've got the world's best marketer um, and Dan Kennedy um, together for two full days, uh, a little joke. Uh, two full days we're gonna to be together, myself and Dan, uh, at least 150 private practice owners from all around America, um, England, Ireland, Australia, Canada are coming in to this hotel. We're gonna be down here in Cleveland. We can't wait to see you. Book your seat right now, paulgoff.com forward slash Dan. Um, fill out the form, book your seat, come and see us. We can't wait to uh, spend the weekend with you here in a very beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. See you then. So welcome to the gym. Uh, it is day two of the Cleveland trip to see Dan. Um, People ask me all the time, what is my morning routine? Well, it starts every day in the gym, and um, here's why. I believe fitness is um, it's just a prerequisite for a business owner, um, not only to be um, successful, um, because of course you can uh, be successful in business without being in the gym or without being fit. I just think it makes it so much harder. Um, one of the biggest challenges in business is the stamina, the energy that is required uh, just to deal with the craft, deal with the hassle, deal with the day-to-day -day things. Um, it just made sense to me that if somebody's a bit fitter than me, um, they're going to be able to get through the day better, easier, they're going to make better decisions. Um, so I've um, had it now in my routine for probably five or six years. I was definitely not a morning person uh, and somehow I've turned that around. I used to do my fitness on the night. Um, I used to tell myself that that was the best time of the day, but since I've really got into business, uh, the clarity that I get from running, from being on a treadmill or on a cross trainer or just, just generally working out on a morning, um, even if it's just for 20 minutes. Uh, the phrase that I use is 20 minutes for the rest of the day. Um, it just sets me up for the day and I do, I think it's really important um, from a physical point of view. Um, but there's also a second type of fitness that I think a business owner needs and that's the emotional fitness. And I don't think too many people talk about that. It's very easy to think about physical fitness, the gym, you come in here, you see guys and girls getting, uh, you, you know, they're getting fit, they're getting pumped, they're getting ripped, whatever you call it. Uh, which is all you know, fantastic and, and definitely a much needed thing for a, a business owner to be able to keep up with um, all of the challenges and just the general pace. You know, from my point of view, I'm traveling around the world. I'm in different beds, I'm in different time zones. I'm in um, some hotels with good aircon, some hotels with not so good aircon. Um, I need to be able to, to, to be fit, to be able to get up to day and you know, do a full day of, of work really. So um, the second type though is this emotional fitness. And that's the ability to deal with things. How quickly can you deal with setbacks? How quickly can you deal with how you feel about things? And I, again, I don't think enough people factor this in that as a business owner. Um, really, if I have got emotional stamina and fitness and I can deal with the lows and I can deal with the challenges and how I feel about the challenges, then ultimately it's gonna make a big difference to my life at the other end that um, if something happens today and I don't really like it, obviously it's gonna change how I feel, 
Uh, and I find that that's what keeps people stuck. They're busy thinking about how they feel, about how they feel about something. And um, if you can get over that loop as fast as possible, and that's that emotional fitness that I talk about, if you can um, be not only physically fit, but you can be emotionally fit as well. Um, and you can deal with how you feel about things and your, you know, your mind and um, very, very quickly change your, your biology or your uh, chemistry, whatever it is, uh, change your thoughts as quickly as possible, stop the loops that keep you stuck in thinking about a problem and get over it as fast as possible. I think that's the ultimate differentiator. I think being in the gym and being physically fit is an absolute prerequisite for a business owner. And it, it, it's not a, uh, you know, it's not a knockout by any means. There's lots of unfit, very rich business owners, but it doesn't mean that they're enjoying the journey. And secondly, um, it's the emotional side of it. If you're emotionally fit and you can deal with the marathon that is business and the challenges and the setbacks and the, you know, people are gonna lie to you, they're gonna cheat, they're gonna let you down, they're gonna deceive you, they're gonna do all sorts of things and that's probably just yourself, um, by the way, uh, you, you're gonna be much better off as a business owner. So for me, being in the gym, being physically fit, being mentally fit, uh, always sharpening my skills mentally, reading books, um, just being at the top of my game and as energetic as I possibly can is uh, my goal as I start the day because I think that's my ultimate secret weapon is uh, to move through the day with energy, um, with emotional fitness. Um, it gives me a very good chance of dealing with all of the stuff that I, today, it's what, five to eight on the morning, 7.55. I have no idea uh, what's gonna happen in the next 24 hours. Um, but if I'm physically able to deal with it and I'm emotionally able to deal with it, it gives me a very, very good chance of a really, really good day. So another thing I'd like to share with you, um, we're in Cleveland again, it's day two, beautiful morning, um, is the idea that you should remain positively stubborn. Uh, positively stubborn, I absolutely love it. It was um, a principle that I was introduced to a few years ago and it um, is kind of contradictory to how most of the world are, which is um, they roll over quite easily, um, things don't quite go their way and they give up. Uh, other people change their mind, other people um, share their opinion and it causes people to kind of go back on what they probably secretly know to be true. Um, but it's also not about getting to the point where you're gonna be stubborn just for the sake of being stubborn. What I love about the positively stubborn is that you can remain optimistic throughout it. Um, just because somebody disagrees with you or uh, for example, a, a hotel, you know, I put lots of events on, I find myself having to be positively stubborn every time I put hotel uh, events on because uh, they don't want to do it the way that I wanna do it. They'll put things in certain places, they'll put the stage or the seats or the AV guy will have to go a certain place and it's not where I want it to be. Um, so I have to remain positively stubborn constantly to get ultimately what I want. But I need to do it in a way that um, doesn't cause me to be angry, doesn't cause me to need, feel like I need to win for the sake of winning. I don't like that mindset where people say, I wanna win at all costs, that's good but just make sure it's not at the cost of your um, your own sort of contentment and calmness and balanced and happy and all of those things. Because I think you can be both and I think you absolutely need it as an entrepreneur that if you want to make it and you want to be successful, you want to feel good about yourself, then you're going to have to be positively stubborn. You're going to have to know that you're right for being open to being wrong and not trying to be right for the sake of being right and not letting um, other people sway your opinions, not letting other people who doubt you tell you that that can't be done or shouldn't be done or that your uh, thinking is wrong, unless it's somebody that you really, really trust, somebody that you really respect who has done what you're trying to do before. That's the difference. So many people, the naysayers, uh, the, the jobs with, if you like, will tell you that certain things can't be done. And I think it's your job to find a way to make it happen. And the philosophy that I take uh, through life with me is uh, positively stubborn. Um, you're gonna come up against a brick wall if you try and move me if you like, from getting what I want from life or what I want from my business or what I want from an event, what I want from a marketing campaign, what I want from a staff member, what I want from a job ad, uh, what I want from whatever it is. Like you're gonna come up against an immovable object. One that's prepared to be moved, by the way, um, but you're gonna have to convince me uh, that you know significantly more about the thing, significantly more experienced about the thing um, before I'd even consider listening. And I think that's a really good message for people. It's, it's not being ignorant to the point where I'm right, it's to the point where unless you can tell me that you've done that and you're more successful than me, then I probably will shut off and I will carry the positively stubborn mindset uh, with me through life because quite simply I know that most people aren't on the same path. Most people I talk to are not gonna be studying, they're not gonna be here in Cleveland with smart people, you know, going for a day with somebody that has helped hundreds of people become a multimillionaire. Um, when he tells me, when Dan tells me that something I'm doing is wrong, 
um, then I'll change course. But you know, there's not many people that I'm going to uh, listen to just because it doesn't feel right for them, or it becomes um, my life isn't my own, and I'm constantly changing my mind on things just to please other people. So, uh, positively stubborn, uh, keep a positive outlook, get what you want, don't let other people change it unless that person is smarter than you, cleverer than you, um, you know, and has a proven track record at doing whatever it is that they're telling you to do differently than you might have thought. Uh, don't listen to them, but most importantly, um, make sure you feel really, really good in the process. Don't be one of these people who does something just to prove it to somebody, that even when you do prove it to them um, and you get what you want, you still don't feel any better anywhere. So there's a big difference. So positively stubborn, um, see if you can carry that with you throughout your life. Um, so I'd say of all of the things um, that I've learned um, that have had the, the biggest shift, if you like, in the way that I um, see life and see business and understand my business. And ultimately then in the end, the opportunities that I've got from my business. Um, the biggest one has been understanding the very simple but um, often overlooked idea that the money in business is found in selling things to people who don't know you or your product exists. So I'll say that again. The biggest, um, kind of shift that you make in business happens when you stop thinking that everybody needs and knows about your product and start to think about the idea nobody knows your product nobody knows you but they all want it or, or, or would want it if they knew it existed because there's significantly more people who don't know that your product exists don't know that you exist but who need that product and I think the mistake that people make is in thinking that um, because they're in love with their product and they know where their store is and they know what the website looks like and how to get there, that everybody else does. And candidly, that, that's not the way it works. So one of the, um, one of the things that I think completely you know, transformed everything for me was, was understanding that philosophy or that principle and then creating a business strategy around it called lead generation. And it's the premise that most people don't know you, they don't know you exist. Um, but they want the thing that you do, they've got the pain that you solve. Um, and if you move towards a lead generation model where your business uh, marketing strategy is all about identifying those people who don't necessarily want you, they don't know about you, um, they probably don't even know about your product, but they need some help with the thing that you do. So lead generation solves that problem and it allows people to um, potentially be found on Facebook or Google or in a newspaper or wherever and instead of saying hey this is what I do you know I'm a physical therapist we say hey if you've got back pain I've got some information let me give it to you and then we'll start a relationship over the next 30 60 90 days that leads to you knowing more about me what I do and then ultimately buying from me so all of the money in business and this is again why I think people get stuck in business usually in the first six to twelve months you get enough customers because people know you or friends or family refer but then what happens after that, you kind of get stuck. And the reason you're stuck is you're trying to market to the wrong crowd. You're trying to reach people that, that you think already know you and already know that your product exists. But the money, the, the, the gigantic leap is when you go after probably the 97% of people who need what you do, but don't know you, don't know you exist, uh, but would buy from you if you made it easy for them to do so. So I would say that the, the shift in the thinking, the principle, if you like, was understanding that people um, in business, the money gets made. Anybody that you're seeing in business who's doing really, really well in business, they're making their money on the back of a strategy that accepts that people um, don't always know who you are or what you do. And if you build a marketing campaign for those people and you implement that over a period of weeks and months, um, you'll be significantly more successful um, than somebody who's marketing um, to a small crowd of people who are looking for, for example, physical therapy. Um, but, but there just isn't enough. You know, we're in Cleveland right now, there's hundreds of thousands of people. How many of them know what physical therapy is or what it does and you know, where to find one? Not many, but I bet there's a significant chunk of people with back pain or knee pain. And if you can figure out how to market to those folks um, and give them information, experts educate like what we said, you would have a significantly better, more successful, more profitable business. Thank you.
So what an incredible few hours. It wasn't even days or weeks. It was an incredible 24 hours we had in Cleveland. I hope you've enjoyed um, the vlog and me sharing some of the lessons I've learned from Dan Kennedy over the last uh, 10 years. So I'm back in Orlando now, I'm back in my office. Um, it's a little sunnier here um, than it was uh, in Cleveland. Um, and what happened at the end, this is the most exciting bit. So I got to spend the day with Dan and I got to sit down with him for nearly an hour and interviewed him uh, for the podcast. Uh, you can listen to it. And what I wanted to share with you at the end of this blog is just some of the stunning um, insights that myself and Dan had about the future of physical therapy. You can listen to it all on the podcast, uh, the Paul Goff Audio Experience and Podcast, and you can also watch it on YouTube. Uh, we sat down to talk about the future of physical therapy if you are stuck inside insurance and doctor referrals. And Dan um, talked about this thing called the Darwinian Consolidation of uh, Healthcare, where basically big hospital systems, you'll have experienced this, they're buying up small independent practices and they're trying to get everybody kind of mashed together so that they can control prices. And what it means is there's either going to be a group that you're in that is controlled and you've got a job. You're going to be independent and unsuccessful because you couldn't figure out how to survive as a result of that kind of merging. Or you can be in the third group independent and successful and we talk on the podcast on the youtube video all about what the strategies are that you need to adopt if you want to be one of the independent and successful and you want to avoid being um i remember dan introduced me to this 10 years ago and it shocked me at first uh, what he calls a second class citizen in healthcare and what that means is um, we always have to wait for handouts. We always have to wait for somebody else to give us the referrals. We always have to wait as PTs for somebody to tell us what we can charge, what we can't charge. Um, and that candidly is how 99% of the profession live and exist. And they wonder why they're tired, they're stressed, they're broke, they're not happy. Um, they're waiting for the system to change and candidly it's never going to change. And the only thing that can change is you, what you do, your habits, how you market, how you price, how you think about your business, who you surround yourself with in business. Um, it's all on you. And if you're waiting for the system to change, good luck. It probably isn't. Um, that's why I personally went and, and flew all the way from England to Cleveland 10 years ago, uh, because I just knew something was better for myself. Uh, I wanted better for myself. I didn't want to be a second class citizen in healthcare. I didn't want to be part of some ugly, big corporate hospital system. I wanted to be an independently successful private practice. I wanted to be an independently successful being, uh, free to live my life, to travel, to be with my kids, to run my business as I saw fit. Um, and with the help of, of Dan, that's what, you know, that's what happened. So head over to the um, podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this little vlog that we've done in Cleveland for the last 24 hours. Head over to the podcast, Paul Goff, G-O-U-G-H, uh, podcast and audio experience, and you can watch it on YouTube as well. Um, it's an interview with Dan Kennedy. What does the future of physical therapy look like for those still stuck in the insurance and doctor referrals trap? Um, you must, must, must must listen to it um, and depending upon when you're watching this um, we've got a fantastic event happening with Dan July the 8th and 9th polgoff.com forward slash Dan to book your tickets for that big event um, that's it subscribe to my channel and uh, we'll be back very soon with uh, more insights videos um, lessons strategies whatever you want to call it um, to help you run a more successful private practice see you soon thanks for watching this video and if you found it helpful and if you now find yourself thinking I wonder what else this person can help me with. Head over to paulgoff.com forward slash books where you can find my best selling books which will show you how to add more profit to your practice. Or send an email to paul at paulgoff.com to ask about how we can help you accelerate the growth and profitability of your clinic. And by the way, if you know anybody who would find this helpful, please share this video out. Thanks so much.